Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Yang hormat Profesor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Roslan Sulaiman, Naib Chancellor University Putra Malaysia. Yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Muhammad Khairul Anwar Muhammad Arifin, Dekan Fakulti Kejuteraan. Yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Thomas Chung Shan Yao yang akan menyampaikan syarahan inaugural pada pagi ini. Pegawai-pegawai kanan Universiti Putra Malaysia, ahli pengurusan fakulti, tetamu-tetamu jemputan, rakan industri, para staf dan pelajar dan para penonton yang dikasihi sekalian. Selamat datang diucapkan kepada semua yang menonton syarahan inaugural oleh yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Thomas Chung Shan Yao. Untuk makluman semua, syarahan inaugural ini diadakan secara dalam talian dan dipancarkan secara langsung melalui Facebook UPM dan Facebook Fakulti Kejuteraan. Para penonton dialu-alukan untuk menekan butang like dan share halaman-halaman Facebook tersebut. Mohon kerjasama untuk mengisi kehadiran yang pautannya dikongsikan melalui ruangan komen di Facebook untuk sijil penyertaan dan mata latihan CPD bagi pekerja UPM. Seterusnya, bagi memohon keberkataan syarhan inaugural kita pada pagi ini, Majlis mempersilakan Dr. Muhammad Zahir Asri Muhammad Tohir dari Jabatan Kejuteraan Kimia dan Alam Sekitar Fakulti Kejuteraan Universiti Putra Malaysia untuk memimpin bacaan doa. Al-Fatihah. A'udzubillahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki yaumiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا حامدا حمدا شاكرا حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك يا الله الوجد الرحمن الرحيم الشكور Sesungguhnya kami memanjatkan kesyukuran di atas segala nikmat dan rahmat yang telah engkau kurniakan kepada kami. Kedua ibu bapa kami, ahli keluarga kami, sahabat handai kami, guru-guru kami serta seluruh warga Universiti Putra Malaysia. Ya Allah Al-Mu'iz, kau berikanlah kami kekhusyukan di majlis inaugural Profesor Engineer Dr. Thomas Chong Shen Yao pada hari ini supaya kami tergolong dalam kumpulan yang kau muliakan serta kau muliakan juga semua yang terlibat dalam ma- dalam menjayakan majlis ini ya Allah ya Allah al-Fattah al-Wadud kami memohon kepadamu ya Allah supaya majlis inaugural yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr Thomas Chong Shen Yao ini kau berikan kelancaran dimudahkan dan di akhirnya beroleh kejayaan ya Allah al-Basit Kau buka luaskanlah pintu-pintu ilmumu supaya dapat kami manfaatkan dalam ibadah pekerjaan kami sebagai sebahagian usaha kami meningkatkan kecermelangan diri serta Universiti Putra Malaysia dengan kuasamu Al-Khaliq. Ya Allah Al-Mukid, kau bukakanlah jalan kejayaan serta kekuatan kepada kami dan generasi-generasi selepas kami untuk kami memartabatkan serta mencintai ilmumu Ya Allah. Ya Allah Al-Quddus, kau sucikanlah serta kau pelihara hati-hati kami sepanjang ibadah pekerjaan kami di Universiti Putra Malaysia dan hidup seharian kami bersama keluarga, sahabat handai dan guru-guru kami supaya kami menjadi hamba yang engkau redai. Ya Zal Jalali Wal Ikram, tambahkanlah kepada kami kecintaan kepada segala kebaikan. Jadikanlah kami guru-guru kami dan pemimpin-pemimpin kami terus berkhidmat dengan istiqamah untuk menabur bakti, membangunkan umat, masyarakat, bangsa dan agama. Ya Allah, Ya Tuhan kami, jadikanlah negara kami sebuah negara yang mendapat limpahan rahmat dan nikmat. Kekalkanlah keamanan dan kemakmuran sepanjang zaman. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illan tawfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna minal khasirin. 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Majlis merakamkan ucapan terima kasih di atas bacaan doa itu tadi. Para penonton yang dihormati sekalian, seterusnya majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan yang hormat Profesor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Roslan Sulaiman, Naib Chancellor University Putra Malaysia untuk mempengurusikan syarhan inaugural ini dan seterusnya menjemput yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Thomas Jung Shan Yao untuk menyampaikan syarhan inaugural beliau. Majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan. Terima kasih saudari pengacara majlis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Yang berbahagia Profesor Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Khairul Anwar Muhammad Arifin, Dekan Fakulti Kejuruteraan. Yang berbahagia Profesor Insinyur Dr. Thomas Chung Shen Yong yang akan menyampaikan syarahan beliau pada pagi ini. Pegawai-pegawai kanan Universiti Putra Malaysia, ahli pengurusan fakulti, tetamu-tetamu jemputan, rakan industri, staf dan pelajar. Serta sidang penonton yang dikasih sekalian. Alhamdulillah, syukur kepada Allah kerana dengan limpah kurnianya, kita masih lagi diberi peluang untuk bersama-sama bagi meneruskan usaha memertabatkan kesarjanaan ilmu pada pagi ini. Izinkan saya untuk membacakan latar belakang Profesor Insinyur Dr. Thomas Chung Shen Wo di dalam majlis yang gemilang ini. Thomas Chung dilahirkan pada 23 Februari 1968 di Segamat, Johor. Anak kedua daripada tiga beradik kepada pasangan Chung Sung Wah dan Lim Pak Chu telah mendapat pendidikan awal di SRK Methodist, Kampar, Perak. Seterusnya, beliau menyambung persekolahan di peringkat menengah di Methodist, Kampar, Perak sehingga tamat persekolahan pada tahun 1985. Usai zaman persekolahan, beliau meneruskan pengajian di Universiti Teknologi Malaysia, UTM dalam bidang kejuruteraan kimia pada tahun 1986. Beliau memperolehi ijazah sarjana muda kejuruteraan pada 1991 dan ijazah sarjana kejuruteraan kimia pada 1995 dari UTM. Beliau memperolehi PhD dari University of Cambridge pada tahun 2000 dan kerjaya akademik beliau bermula pada tahun 1996 iaitu apabila, apabila beliau dilantik sebagai tutor di Jabatan Kejuruteraan Kimia dan Alam Sekitar Fakulti Kejuruteraan Universiti Putra Malaysia. Kini, beliau merupakan profesor di Jabatan Kejuruteraan Kimia dan Alam Sekitar. Berbekalkan pengalaman lebih 20 tahun dalam bidang pengajaran dan penyelidikan, kepakaran penyelidikan beliau telah menerbitkan lebih daripada 200 kertas kerja dalam jurnal saintifik terkemuka dan prosiding persidangan. Beliau sering dijemput untuk menyampaikan syarahan di persidangan dan pembentangan serta ceramah di pelbagai industri. Beliau terlibat dalam banyak projek logi perintis untuk proses kimia. Dan selain daripada aktiviti pengajaran dan penyelidikan, beliau terlibat secara aktif dalam aktiviti profesional. Sidang hadirin yang dimuliakan sekalian, Profesor Thomas merupakan seorang jurutera profesional yang berdaftar di bawah Lembaga Jurutera Malaysia, Board of Engineers Malaysia. Beliau juga merupakan ahli korporat institusi Jurutera Malaysia dan merupakan jurutera bertauliah, Chartered Engineer, yang berdaftar dengan Majlis Kejuruteraan United Kingdom. Selain itu, beliau turut menjadi Fellow Institusi Jurutera Kimia United Kingdom, merupakan ahli Majlis IEM, pengurusi bahagian teknikal kejuruteraan kimia IM dan berdari institusi institusi jurutera kimia Malaysia. Beliau juga dilantik sebagai panel akreditasi Majlis Akreditasi Kejuruteraan Lembaga Kejuruteraan Malaysia dan uh, Profesor Thomas Chung juga aktif dalam penglibatan dengan pihak industri antaranya ialah Solution Engineering Berhad 
Kawan Engineering Sendirian Berhad dan Tenaga Nasional Berhad Research. Di peringkat antarabangsa, beliau telah dijemput sebagai pembentang dan penceramah utama dalam dan luar negara termasuk Accenture Asia Pacific Oil and Gas Forum, International Conference on Integrated and Innovative Solution for Circular Economy, Taiwan, dan International Conference on Sustainable Water Environment, China. Kepakaran beliau diiktiraf di peringkat antarabangsa sehingga membawa kepada pelantikan beliau sebagai penilai program kejuruteraan kimia di Universiti Teknologi Brunei. Secara kumulatif, beliau telah menerima geran penyelidikan bernilai kira-kira ringgit Malaysia 3 juta dan telah menjalankan konsultasi bagi projek bernilai hampir ringgit Malaysia 10 juta. Dalam bidang inovasi, Thomas Chung telah memfailkan 5 patent produk. Merentasi lebih 20 tahun dalam kerjaya Profesor Thomas, beliau telah menerima pelbagai pengiktirafan dan anugerah Antaranya ialah telah disenaraikan sebagai World Top 2% Scientist tahun 2021 oleh University of Stanford. Sidang hadirin yang dikasihi, sekarang marilah kita mendengar syarahan inaugural oleh Profesor Insinyur Dr. Thomas Chung Shen Yong yang bertajuk An Integrated Procedure for Synthesis of Algorithm for Modeling of Cyclic Processes. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih kepada Puan Penacara Majlis, Prof. Maknya Dr. Tinia Idadi Muhammad Ghazi dan Tuan Pembaca Doa Dr. Muhammad Zahir Azri Muhammad Tohil yang hormat Profesor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Roslan Sulaiman, Naib Chancellor University Putra Malaysia, yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Muhammad Khairul Anwar, Muhammad Arifin, Dekan Fakulti Kejuruteraan, Pegawai-Pegawai Kanan University Putra Malaysia, Ahli Pengurusan Fakulti. Izinkan saya untuk berucap dalam bahasa Inggeris untuk syarahan inaugural saya. My beloved family, my respected mentors, fellow academics, colleagues, industry partners and collaborators, my beloved students and researchers, and all of you who are attending this lecture via Facebook live streaming today, a very good morning. Today I will be delivering my inaugural lecture entitled An Integrated Procedure or synthesis of algorithms for modeling of cyclic processes. Adsorption is one of the key separation techniques used in the chemical industry. It is a surface phenomenon where molecules form bonds with surface of a solid. The reverse process where the adsorbed molecules are re removed is called desorption. A mass separating agent is a species add to ensure separation takes place. For adsorption, the mass separating agent is the adsorbent. Adsorptive separation is achieved by one of the three mechanisms, steric, kinetic, or equilibrium effect. A large majority of adsorption processes operate through the equilibrium effect. Examples of adsorbents are activated carbon, zeolites, silica gel, activated alumina, and carbon nanofibers. An application of adsorption is the supply of medical grade oxygen. Medical oxygen is an essential maxim in the treatment of COVID-19. For several COVID-19 patients, the oxygen levels in their bodies can become low. Organs such as brain, heart, lung and kidneys all require oxygen. When the oxygen levels are low, the cells in the body could not perform the normal functions. And in extreme cases, this can cause death. Therefore, adequate supply of oxygen 
is crucial for the survival of the patient. Oxygen therapy is also an essential treatment for children with pneumonia, newborns, and mothers with birth complications. Oxygen is produced by feeding compressed air into a bed packed with exorbitant such as zeolite 5A or lithium X. As nitrogen is absorbed more on the surface of the exorbitant and rich oxygen stream is produced. Another application of absorption <coughs> is in carbon capture, storage, and utilization. As we all know, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas causing global warming. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, carbon dioxide concentration has risen from 280 ppm to 410 ppm. It is essential to reduce the emission of carbon dioxide to limit the increase of global temperature to below 2 degrees Celsius. A large amount of carbon dioxide comes from flue gas due to the burning of fossil fuel. Absorption is one of the potential techniques for capturing carbon dioxide in an industrial scale. Carbon dioxide is preferentially absorbed onto exorbitants such as zeolite, activated carbons, and carbon nanofibers. Absorbent in the form of powder or pellet may result in large pressure drop and blockage. Structure absorbents such as monolakes have high void fraction and low pressure drop. It could cause less clogging. Monolake is suitable for handling large quantity of low pressure gas stream, such as flue gas, which is inherently dusty. Carbon nanofiber as an advanced carbon material has impressive properties. Our lab has successfully synthesized carbon nanofiber monolakes using chemical vapor deposition technique. Absorption process differs in the methods used to regenerate exorbitants. Two common regeneration methods for gas are thermal swing, which involve a change in temperature, and pressure swing, a change in pressure. Pressure swing, or PSA, has the advantage that pressure can be changed much more rapidly than temperature. PSA is a cyclic process, where the beds are repeatedly being subjected to adsorption and desorption. Adsorption takes place at high pressure, while the adsorbent bed is regenerated by lowering the pressure. For continuous production, a two-bed process is required. While one bed is in production, the other bed is regenerated. Rapid pressure swing adsorption, or RPSA, is an intensified PSA process. It uses a single bed with small particle size and short cycle times. RPSA has the advantages of process simplicity and high productivity. It provides promising solutions to size and portability, such as oxygen concentrator. The two basic steps of RPSA are pressurization and depressurization. During pressurization, the fit ends is pressurized with air. As the fit gas flows through the column, the combination of short cycle time and small particle size lead to a steep pressure gradient resulting in an enriched oxygen product stream. In the depressurization step, the feed valve is closed and the exhaust valve is opened, which results in desorption of the absorbed nitrogen. A pressure gradient within the bed ensures a continuous product stream throughout the cycle. Cyclic process is inherently dynamic, and it has no steady state. It undergoes a transient stage before reaching cyclic steady state, or CSS. The behavior of CSS is illustrated here using air separation by RPSA. After about 2,000 cycles, cyclic steady state is reached, where the oxygen mole fraction at some instant within a cycle 
have the same values as at the corresponding instant within each subsequent cycle. That is, the cycle repeats itself, and the oxygen mole fractions oscillate with time about a mean value. Mathematical models are useful tool for design and optimization. A procedure is presented here for integrating the construction of mathematical models for RPSA and the synthesis of algorithms for their numerical solutions. The first two steps in the procedure involve construction of the model. First, physical phenomena to be included in a model needs to be identified. If a model is too complex, it is easy to make mistakes and time-consuming to solve. If it is too simple, the model may not capture all the essential physical features. Second, the model needs to be formulated in a physically reasonable way. In particular, it should obey the conservation laws. Numerical simulation will never perfectly conserve mass due to discretization error or rounding error. The numerical conservation errors are computed to guide the numerical accuracy. Finally, the procedure includes two features specific to the transient simulation of cyclic processes. The first is an a priori rational stopping criterion to determine the CSS. The second feature affects the reduction of the number of cycles required to reach CSS. In principle, the procedure presented here could be used over a wide range of practical modeling problems, in particular to cyclic processes. An absorption model needs to consider the following five physical features. Absorption equilibrium, heat effects, flow resistance, axial dispersion, and absorption kinetics. There are three distinct mass transfer resistance in a porous adsorbent. The adsorbent first diffuses from the bulk fluid to the external surface of the particle, and then into and through the micropores, micropores, and finally adsorbed onto the surface of the micropores. It is essential to identify the dominant transport resistance of the adsorbent particles. As the particle size becomes smaller, as in the case of RPSA, the effect of external firm resistance may become significant. An analytical solution based on the Fourier series expansion is derived for the linear drying force model, which includes the external firm resistance. The mass transfer coefficient was found to be a function of cycle time and bio number of mass transfer. It is observed that the external firm resistance reduces the mass transfer coefficient significantly at small cycle time. An axially displaced black hole model or IDPF model is used to describe the flow in a packed bed. The boundary conditions commonly used in an ADPF model is a downwards boundary conditions. That is, zero concentration gradient at the exit. This is true for dilute mixture, but is not correct for a rich binary gas mixture in a pet bed with an axial pressure gradient, such as RPSA. The use of concentration gradient implies zero pressure gradient at the exit, and hence no gas will flow out of the bed, which is clearly unphysical. To avoid this inconsistency, instead, zero mole fraction gradient is recommended. This recommendation is physically sound, since it does not imply zero pressure gradient, and thus zero gas velocity at the bed exit.
Consider now pressurization of air in a non-absorbing pet bed. As a bed is non-absorbing, the law of conservation of mass states that mass in must be equal to mass out. Mass balance studied by all first-year chemical engineering students is a powerful tool for analysis. Two model formulations are compared. The use of concentration gradients and the use of mole fraction gradients. For the first model formulation, the system conserves mass if and only if the pressure gradient at the exit is zero, which is untrue for RPSA. And this unphysical formulation results in a separation paradox. On the other hand, Writing the boundary conditions in mole fraction gradient leads to a model that conserves mass, regardless of pressure gradient at the exit. By using a numerical example, it is demonstrated that an unphysical model formulation will predict the destroy of 7% of incoming mass. The linear drying force model for RPSA process is derived for a binary gas mixture. Some of the assumptions make are the process is isothermal, an ADPF model is used to describe the flow pattern, the flow resistance is modeled using the Darcy's law, the pressure at the fit end is subjected to a step change, constant product delivery rate, the bake is initially at equilibrium with atmospheric air, the governing equations and associated boundary conditions are presented here. The PDEs resulted from the governing equations are solved using the method of lines. The PDEs are first discretized spatially into ODEs using the method of autoconal collocation. The ODEs are then soft using and subroutine suitable for stiff systems. Computer programs written in Fortran and MATLAB are developed for the simulations. The two decision parameters for numerical accuracy are the number of interior collocation points used in the discretization and the tolerance values in the ODE solver. The RPSA model is validated by comparing the numerical calculations with the similarity solutions for a semi-infinite bit. The numerical simulation for depressurization of a physically consistent model and physically inconsistent model are compared. For a physically consistent model, excellent agreement between the numerical calculations and the similarity solution is obtained. On the other hand, numerical oscillations are encountered in oxygen mole fraction for depressurization if an unphysical model formulation is employed. Because of discretization error and rounding error, numerical simulations will not perfectly conserve mass. The conservation error is computed as a guide to the accuracy of numerical simulations. The calculation of conservation errors require the evaluation of time integral. In numerical simulation, an integral is commonly evaluated using quadrature. However, due to a rapid change of velocity with time at the fit end, even the use of quadrature points of up to 10,000 does not provide the required numerical accuracy. This discrepancy can be overcome by transforming time integrals into ODEs. After the transformation, the accuracy of the time integrals is maintained inherently by the ODE solver. An error of less than 0.1% can be achieved easily. This transformation also means that there is no additional decision parameter introduced in the computer programs. The RPSA model is now validated by comparing the numerical calculations with similarity solutions for a semi-infinite bit. 
The numerical simulations for depressurization of a physically consistent model and physically inconsistent model are compared. For a physically consistent model, excellent agreement between the numerical calculations and the simulated solution is obtained. On the other hand, numerical oscillations are encountered in oxygen mole fraction for depressurization if an unphysical model formulation is employed. The cyclic steady state is determined by following the transient of the process. Numerically, this is the method of successive substitution, or MSS. A question often asked is, how sure is cyclic steady state achieved? To answer this question, an a priori stopping criterion is derived. This criterion could prevent early termination of simulation and also avoid wasting computing time due to simulation of unnecessary cycles. It is observed that after an initial region, the semi-log plot of advance versus number of cycles is approximately quasi-linear. And this observation allows an extrapolator to be devised to predict the cyclic steady state. Note that the value of the stopping criterion is not arbitrary, but depends on systems and accuracy required in the solution. The cyclic steady state may require many cycles to reach and thus can be computationally demanding. The computational time required to reach CSS may be reduced by first, improving the numerical methods used to solve the model equations, or second, by speeding up the convergence of CSS using accelerators, such as accelerated MSS and direct determination. The accelerated method of successive substitution speeds up the convergence based on simulations performed using the MSS. The simulator extrapolates or accelerates to predict the CSS. One of the salient features of the accelerators, unlike the method of direct determination, is that the profiles of process variables at CSS can be preserved. The extrapolator reduces the number of cycles to reach CSS while bracketing the CSS from opposite sides. A second extrapolator could be generated from the sequence of the first extrapolator, forming a pair extrapolator that further reduces the computing time required for determining CSS. A hybrid algorithm performs the first few simulations with the MSS. Acceleration is then initiated, and attainment of CSS is confirmed using the rational stopping criterion. If the stopping criterion is not met, the updated process variables will be used as the initial conditions for a few cycles of MSS and the acceleration is initiated again. The calculation is repeated until CSS is reached. The Aiken and Muller methods are studied here. The Aiken's method is a method of accelerating convergence of linearly convergent sequence. It requires three cycles of MSS. The Muller method is a general form of the second method. For the Muller method, a parabolic line is projected and a new sequence is obtained from the root calculated from the coefficients of the parabola. The Muller method requires four cycles of MSS. The two hybrid algorithms are first applied on an isothermal control cycle steel tank reactor, a cyclic process where conversion can be described by a nonlinear algebraic equation, which requires much less computing time to solve compared to RPSA. The control cycle steel tank reactor is a cyclic batch reactor where parts of the reacting mixture at the end of a cycle is mixed with fresh feed for subsequent cycles. The hybrid algorithms 
show a significant reduction of number of cycles to reach CSS, with the Muller algorithm gives a better performance. The ICON and the Muller algorithms reduce the computing time by 47 and 88% respectively. The Muller hybrid algorithm is then used to simulate RPSA. Both the Muller and the MSS converge to the same CSS. The Muller algorithm reduces the computing time by approximately 50%. Both the MSS and Muller algorithm have similar oxygen mole fraction profiles for the first four cycles. At cycle 5, the Muller algorithm accelerates the oxygen mole fraction profile. The accelerated oxygen mole fraction profile is then used as initial conditions for the next cycle. As the initial conditions is now at a higher profile, the subsequent cycles will have an initial condition closer to the CSS, and hence accelerating the convergence to CSS. It is clearly shown that the Muller algorithm preserves the profiles of oxygen mole fraction at CSS. In principle, the procedure presented here could be used over a wide range of practical modeling problems, in particular to cyclic processes. The procedure presented here is designed to yield a model that makes physical sense and an algorithm that minimizes the number of decisions that a user of code will need to make. Application of the procedure ensures that the desired accuracy of the simulation is consistently rationally, and economically achieved. Two algorithms specific to cyclic processes have been successfully designed. In future, I aim to continue improve the algorithms for cyclic processes to apply the integrated procedure in the modeling and simulation of oxygen concentrator and direct air capture, and also to work on the synthesis of nano size adsorbents. I would like to dedicate this lecture to my late father, Mr. Chong San Hua, my mother, Madam Lim Bak Chu, my wife, Su Fen, and my sons, Ian, also to my research supervisors, Dr. David Scott and Dr. Bill Patterson. I wish to acknowledge the top management of University Putra, Malaysia, the deans of Faculty of Engineering, especially to Emeritus Professor Tato Abang Abdullah Abang Ali, the late Dato Dr. Radin Umar Radin Sohadi, Professor Fagur Razi Amadun, the Head of Department of Chemical Engineering and Environmental Engineering, especially to Professor Tan Ka King, Professor Asni Idris, Professor Robia Yunus, and also to my colleagues, including my postdocs, sponsors of research grants, both internal and external, and last but not least, to all my research students, especially to Mr. Abba Ibrahim for helping me with the preparation of slides, and to Dr. Lai Ning, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Inti International University, for the work on hybrid algorithm. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Majlis merakamkan ucapan terima kasih di atas penyampaian syarahan inaugural oleh yang berbahagia Profesor Engineer Dr. Thomas Chung Shaniao. Sidang penonton yang dihormati sekalian, dengan ini maka berakhirlah sudah syarahan inaugural pada pagi ini. Sekali lagi, majlis merakamkan ucapan terima kasih di atas kesudian anda semua yang mengikuti secara dalam talian. Sekian terima kasih. Wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.